I am the very model of a singularitarian. I'm combination transhuman and modal estrogen. Aggressively, I'm changing all my body's biochemistry because my body's heritage is altered genetically. Replacing all the cells these bunches here just temporarily. The pattern of my brain and body's weather's continuity. I'll try to improve these patterns with optimal biology. But how will I do that? I need to be smarter. Ah, yes. I'll expand my mental faculties by merging with technology. Expand his mental faculties by merging with technology. Expand his mental faculties by merging with technology. Expand his mental faculties by merging with technology. And with a new technology, renewable clean energy, remove our pathogens and overcome hunger and poverty. In short, I am a transhuman, a modalist extropian. I am the very model of a singularitarian. In short, he is a transhuman, a modalist extropian. He is the very model of a singularitarian. Knowledge in all forms, music, art, science, and technology. Our brains and bodies are precious in any loss of tragedy. Important recognitions and insights are what we should retain while we destroy all of the useless information that remains. And when a person dies, we lose a profound pattern tragically. And the part of ourselves that interacted with them literally. Religious folks may rationalize that death is really something good. Something good? Something good? Huh? I think they changed our minds of singularity were understood. I think they changed their minds of singularity were understood. I think they changed their minds of singularity were understood. I think they changed their minds of singularity were understood. I think they changed their minds of singularity were understood. I create and appreciate all of the knowledge that I know to a greater order even though complexity I know may grow. In short, I am a transhuman and modalist extropian. I am the very model of a singularitarian. In short, he is a transhuman and modalist extropian. He is the very model of a singularitarian. The purpose of the universe is that of all our human lives. Since no aliens have come forth this much, we can now rationalize. We'll spread our thoughts with nanobots that know how to self-replicate. Through solar system, Milky Way, or anywhere we designate. Ideas are our products that will solve the problems of our fate. And new ideas for the problems we can't yet articulate. Let's leverage all our knowledge from the returns that accelerate. Returns that accelerate? Sounds familiar. Ah, yes, the law of accelerating returns by Ray Kurzweil. Of course, of course. So the outcome of the universe is something we can contemplate. The outcome of the universe is something we can contemplate. The outcome of the universe is something we can contemplate. The outcome of the universe is something we can contemplate. The singularity is near, but I won't be indifferent. In case something should go awry, I'll do my best to prevent. Because I am a transhuman and modalist extropian, I am the very model of a singularitarian. Because he is a transhuman and modalist extropian, he is the very model of a singularitarian. Yes! Singularity! Woohoo! Singularity is here! Singularity is near! Singularity! What on it? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hey, I'm just gonna go for a bit. Hey, and welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards the singularity. I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Jeff Fidcock. I'm Tristan Grace. We've got a special episode of High 45 this week. Uh, we're just back from the uh, summit, the Australian Singularity Summit, which was, what, two weeks back now? Mm. The, what? Not quite. It's only been no, a, it's a week. It's a week. Back? Oh, okay, week back. The, Dude, the, it's only been a week. Seven days. Was it like the, the 11th and 12th of September? Indeed I think it was. It was? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was pretty damn awesome. Uh, a lot of awesome speakers, a lot of amazing people. So pretty much for this episode, what we're just going to do is go over the, s the speeches and all of that yeah, just and see what we thought. Like the three of us went and just it was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, Jeff went too. He's the new, he's the new guy. <laughs> Only for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it, it was great. So we're not going to talk about any of the like... Uh, any of the latest stuff on the Story, net or anything like that. We're just going to go roughly through the speakers. Episodes after this, we're going to go more in depth for each of them and then talk about it. But just for now, we're just going to yeah. do a recap on the... Uh, Hopefully on the we can do interviews summit. with the people. That's, that's the plan still. Cool. Yeah, maybe. I'll speak to them, so I think. Yeah. So cool. There's a bit of a retrospective there. Yeah. 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 So uh, let's see what we think. Uh, what, what are we going with first, Mr. Jeff? Uh, we're just going to say, what, we, what, what did you think of it? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there were some uh, very interesting speakers, um, some very massive blue sky statements that were, in some respects, unsubstantiated, but hey, it was a singularity <laughs> conference, you know? You've got to be extreme. Yeah, yeah, You've yeah, got, you got to have fun with it. But aside from that, there were some really, really awesome speakers, and some of the ideas that were being thrown about were awesome, and, you know, it's the precedent. It was held in Australia, you know, first time outside of the United States. Yeah. First time in Australia. And there were some very cool people there, and uh, with hope, with I don't luck. think cool is the right word, but interesting <laughs> It, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, their mum tells them that. They're <laughs> straight. A lot no, of they were cool. A lot were a bit eccentric, but I love eccentric people. They're awesome. They're fun to talk to. Yes, like, yeah. Who are we to point fingers on? <laughs> <laughs> on, my Facebook on my Facebook profile, I got like borderline eccentric. Dot, 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 dot. 
Yeah, you, you changed it after the conference, didn't you? Cause... No, 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 it's been like that for a while. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, okay well, so you, 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 you make shit happen, man. Your opinion of the uh, the conference, go Bruce? Oh, it was Adam, awesome. Sorry. It was awesome. Like, much props to Adam Ford and all the speakers. Like, that was, it was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> It was tons of fun going out and drinking with those guys as well. That was lots of fun. It's a four a.m. on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Monday morning. Oh man. I know it was very like a lot of it was cool. yeah a lot of it was very dystopian. Um, I'm not sure the the Singularity Institute in the states will you know agree will like <laughs> this summit. Yeah. Because they tend to like the whole like oh the Singularity is gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome, man. But it was actually good to see the dystopian side of things and see other people's views. Yeah. Um, well, some people were dysfunctional, you said, but you remember, so... Yeah, yeah. 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 So what about yourself, Jeff? What do you think? Did oh, you you've already thought? asked what I thought. It's your go now. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, pity. Stop, stop trying to escape out of it. Give your well, impressions. I liked it. I, I thought it was pretty epic. Uh, all, all things considered, it was lots and lots of fun. Yeah, as you said, very dystopian. Uh, not as much of the singularity focus as much as I would have thought. Actually, climate yeah. change came up. A yeah, lot. climate change did. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people saying about all of the massive failures our civilization uh, could actually face. So that was an interesting thing. <laughs> but uh, the main speakers and all of that uh, brought off some interesting ideas. It was great. Like I mean, the three of us had some fantastic discussions on the flight back and the the train ride back yeah. and everything. It was great. Well, the coolest thing was just talking to the people. There. Oh yeah, that was it. Hanging like, out with people more, who had similar actually ideas. more so than the actual like speakers. Spe- well, even chilling with like, the speakers, like chatting with them, was great fun. Yeah, it was kind of cool. Anyway, uh, so what what did we do? We'll go through each of the, the we picked about, about six, six yeah. speakers that we want to actually like, talk a little bit about. We're only going to do about maybe five minutes, if that. Hopefully, about four about yeah. what we think and go from there. Alrighty, so awesome. I suppose we're going to open up with uh, Robert Sparrow. He was the first one. Yeah, he was the first speaker, so he'll be first tonight. Very good, great yeah. introduction. 9 a.m. eugenics. Yeah, 9 a.m. eugenics. <laughs> Early morning, uh, highly optimistic uh, treatment of the whole idea of liberal eugenics, which yeah. he sort of kicked down and destroyed. But, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeez Louise. Yeah, yeah, so I suppose the idea was that a whole bunch of people, like Julian Civilescu, he's, he's a really prominent sort of guy, they're pushing this whole idea of liberal eugenics, you know. It, it's like an option that you can or cannot take, you know. We're, we're not going to be authoritarian about it. You know, we're just giving you the op- opportunity, I suppose, to be, you know, uh, a better human being in, in all possible ma- manners. And this guy yeah. sort of, um, you know, cut this down by saying that, you know, when we, you introduce the technology, it's going to be a game changer and there's going to be all these coercive market pressures being applied to these people. It's sort of like the mobile phones, like... The mobile phone, I thought, was a great example. Yeah. The same way that you don't need to have a mobile phone. No one's forcing you to have a mobile phone. But if you don't, you're severely disabled you in probably, our current society. You should probably preface what he was actually talking about, though. Dude. Yeah, well... He's I, talking about, um, like, gene therapy and uh, genetic yeah, sort of yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah we're, like, we're uh, just yeah. throwing around jargon, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just went straight into it, like, yeah, it's going to be this new thing called liberal gene ge- ge- so like, what? Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. It, so. it's, it's based on... Um, Basically, as the technology comes in with genetic modification and how we're already kind of almost at the point, I think we are up to the point now where you can actually check out, um, say, the eggs from the woman and actually determine which ones are going to be susceptible to certain diseases like multiple yeah. sclerosis. They're and, already doing that screening. Yeah, and things like they're, that. they're already doing that screening and it's only a few more steps from there until we can actually take the embryo and actually genetically code it to not only get rid of diseases but actually enhance people um, the whole idea is cognitively, like yeah. genetic determinism. Yeah. Enhance and any facet you want to. Yeah. The great example that was brought up that really, I think, got all of us thinking that the, the reason that I really love this uh, as speaker and speech was just because of this idea. Um, if you know your child is going to have, it's not going to be the smartest it could be, like if this egg, this embryo is not going to be the smartest it could be, and you could try again and find something there, are you a bad parent for not doing that? Are you a bad person? Because you are not giving your child the best possible chances. And I mean, that, that's going to happen, isn't it? And I mean, imagine you're a parent. And I mean, I'm sure a lot of people here of you are. I mean, you want the best for your kid, no matter what. No matter what. So aren't you going to keep on trying again and again and again to find the best? That you want to just get rid of all of that there? Problem and is, how do you define the best? Like, yes, yeah. well, that's what he brought up. Yeah, so the whole idea is like, you know, how, how, who are we to define what is best and what is not? Like, um, it, go- it goes back to, like, all that old research that people are throwing around, you know, genes for criminality, genes for homosexuality. You know, these things don't really have any scientific basis. Right. It's just this whole sociological sort of pressure that is, uh, you know, forcing research to go down these avenues that aren't necessarily good. Yeah. 
and find the criminal gene. Yeah, and you know, even when you do find that, then then you've come down to what what actually is the best and how yeah. how you determine the best for your children. I mean, who are you to determine what is best for your children? Well, even that way, like say removing diseases, removing all of that way. I, I think we could establish an equilibrium, saying that all of us would agree that we want to at least have our kid to have no uh, pre. Yeah, yeah, predispositions towards yeah. cancer and oh, yeah. all the horrible diseases out there. Let's say that that is a basis. After that, it's not really about getting rid of their disabilities. It's really about picking Enabling their enhancements. Them, yeah. yeah, and that becomes a problem, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, maybe. Don't you don't. I'm, I'm still. I'm still sort of an advocate for eugenics. So I. I well, think... it, Eugenics is such a loaded term. I know, I mean... Like I said, people are in there. None of the bad things, but yeah. we are going to start picking the good things, aren't we? Well, so that, that's what when, he was when, at. Design yeah. the babies, design the babies. Yeah, when parents just pick the, the traits that they actually want. Like, some parents will want, like, a sporty baby, and some people might want... You, know, you, could, you could even pick both. You could have a sporty and an intellectual baby. Yeah, so why wouldn't you always <laughs> do that? Well, so you would. Yeah. Why not? So, the, where's the new equilibrium that's reached? There is none. Well, you're still working for Why them. wouldn't there be? Like, you want him to Actually, be as sporty as possible, as smart as possible, at the top. as healthy as possible. So there is an equilibrium reach. It's always at the, the edges, though. Besides, you're wouldn't always be, working like, from... Whoever... You're always working from the parent's genetic material. I, th yeah. I thought he that was a bit of a misnomer. Like, he said that true, if you true. had... Be if you identified the best, then everybody would have the best, right? No, what, but not necessarily, because you still need to prove paternal, uh, paternalism and all this. What he did there. say that you could actually, after a while, say... Take, take genes, the, the important genes from other people, and yeah. put them in. Like, I mean, that is well, a yeah. bit far in the Find future. the best genes on the planet, and I, that I, is the perfect... Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, let's, yeah. let's take it a little bit hypothetically here. Like, I mean, we are moving a lot beyond what he was speaking about, but this is interesting, and I think people will find it interesting. That I mean, sure, we can actually base it around the parents and actually pick what the best the parents could have. Or why not know that if you had this gene, you'd be an ultimate, like, sporty god, <laughs> and you'd be, like, an intellectual superstar... Like, why wouldn't you ever have that in your kid? You want the best for your kid. So where does the equilibrium reach? It's all nature versus nurture thing, though, like, in some respects. Is it? Like, it's, it's, not, it's not all purely genetics. It's also due no, uh, no, to of course. Well. But, I mean, genetics-wise, you could actually reach the best. Yeah. Because uh, it's... it's but then it's we don't a, know what It's a is. certain science once we actually work it out. <laughs> I, I just want to know what science. the best is. I want to know what that equilibrium is. I want to know what... Is working it's environmentally us. contingent, though. Like, yeah, 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 like, yeah but, <laughs> but I think that the different cool, cultures will have different bests. Yeah. The coolest thing about this talk is, um, like, genetic modification has always been on the agenda for a long time. But uh, just the idea of actually linking it to eugenics, basically doing that that thought experiment of, okay, if we go down this path, it's going to end up, um, where the governments are going to actually have to come in at some point and say, not not so much tell you you have to do this, but put in education campaigns to and incentives and incentives to yeah. get people because if you have because we're talking like orders of magnitude if we can actually work out you know you can give your baby even twice the intelligence like twice the intelligence which is nothing in what we could possibly do of a person who doesn't get genetically modified then that's like an order of magnitude difference in like would, intelligence yeah, level you in wouldn't society not do it yeah, the government would really want that as well because, yeah. like, yeah. just think everybody that's not performing to their peak output is a yeah. is a drain in the tax system. So, and yeah. personally, I, I think that's just pure evil if you don't upgrade your baby, and because <laughs> because they're going to be half as intelligent as that's what they could have been as what they could have. So and the moral imperative is to upgrade, and that's, and that's nothing. Like we're talking, it'll be like trillions of times. Yeah, especially once you start augmenting with technology and like. And you have that option. Yeah, but this like, is independent. Let's let's not yeah. mix up eugenics yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah, But I, I fully understand that yeah. together. But. but yeah, never link that whole that whole thing of like this is actually a new eugenics in a sense. 